Welcome to Beat Diabetes, where we look at ways and means for defeating the monster that has attacked your health. On today's program, I'll be discussing what you can do when your blood sugar spikes too high after eating a meal. And we'll also consider the question, which is it, sugar or just carbs in general, that are the real problem for diabetics? Here's another comment. You check your blood sugar just to make sure you don't you didn't eat too much. I, I was talking in one video about how if I'm eating a food that's a bit iffy and I'm not sure if it's going to work or not, I'll check my blood sugar to see how high it goes. And if it goes too high, I'll I'll know better the next time around. So they're saying, yeah, you check your blood sugar sometimes to make sure you didn't eat too much. But this made me wonder, what do you do if your sugar is really high? What do you do to bring it down? Is there a trick to that? Well, that's a fair question. And, and a lot of people uh, find that light to moderate exercise after a meal will sometimes bring it down. And I've done that myself a time or two. I don't do it much, but some people report that just a medium walk after a meal where their blood sugar has gone too high and it'll bring it down. In fact, that's probably more common than it is not. I haven't found that much success with it, and I guess that's one reason I don't do it, but there is another reason and that is that uh, for me, I, I'm just, I'm just, I have a tendency to say, okay, well, I won't eat that meal again and let it just come down. Now, if it goes really high, I do concern myself a bit about an overreaction and my blood sugar dropping too low when my pancreas overreacts. And it has done that, although it doesn't do it much these days. But there was a time when he was doing it a lot. And so sometimes, like on a YouTube test where I eat something I know is going to jack it up pretty high, like the, the times I'll eat potatoes or trick cereal or whatever, what I'll do is about when I, after about maybe two to three hours, I'll eat a handful of nuts. And that will introduce a much slower acting uh, food with, with some carbs that will gently ease it back down into a normal range because I don't like hypos and I can still get natural hypos. Even though I don't take insulin, I don't take medicine. I can get a natural hypo at times. At least I used to be able to. I, I guess I still can, but I just don't do it hardly at all. And like I said, the only time I would eat a high carb meal would be for a YouTube test. I don't do it that often. If I do and I see it's up in the 200s, I will usually wait about three hours or so, eat a handful of nuts, and that just eases it right back down. But what I, if I was testing myself and it wasn't connected with YouTube, I was just trying to decide, is this food worthy of me eating more than once? And I saw it went too high. Well, the simple answer is you just don't eat that anymore. It's not like your body can't handle one or two spikes. You know, your body can. Some people are spiking their blood sugar for years before they get in trouble. So if you occasionally uh, overdo it or you, you're trying a food and it doesn't work and you find yourself up to 200, it's not like you need to get desperate and run to the emergency room. Uh, you can just simply determine not to eat that food again or not in that portion or, or not that way and do better the next time around. But light exercise, such as a walk, such as a, uh, some time on an elliptical trainer or a treadmill, tends to lower blood sugar. Interestingly, high-intensity exercise for long periods of time will often raise blood sugar. And some people have reported that really getting out there and huffing and puffing and sweating and, you know, a real workout, their blood sugar will go up whether they've eaten anything or not. So you're, you're probably not going to lower your blood sugar by going out and running sprints, but you may well lower it by going for just a normal walk or spending a little time on the elliptical trainer. Well, here's another person uh, who has uh, said, why do you talk so much about carbs? People don't like it that I talk about carbs a lot, but I mean, how can you help that uh, when carbs are at the center of uh, the issue of diabetes? He says, why do you talk so much about carbs? Sugar is the problem for diabetics. Well, sugar is a carb, first of all. So when I talk about carbs, I talk about sugar. In fact, sugar is not just a carb. It is the mother of all carbs. It is the most evil, the most sinister, the most malicious, the most terrible of all the carbs. So when you're starting to cut carbs, start with sugar first. 
And that doesn't mean just a bowl of table sugar. Some people say, okay, I'm throwing out the bowl of table sugar. No, any food that's got sugar in it, you know, all your donuts, all your sugary desserts, your sodas, your fruit juices, uh, and even fruit, you know, much, much fruit has natural sugar, which is your body can't tell the difference. If you're diabetic, your body can't tell the difference between a banana and a candy bar. And I've done a video that shows that. Uh, but uh, so when we want to when we want to uh, get better with our blood sugar, we've got to cut carbs and sugar is, is the first. But it's not by any means all that we have to cut. And uh, that's the problem for a lot of people. Almost everybody knows you got to cut uh, sugar. Everybody knows that. Every vegan knows that. Every meat eater knows that. Every carnivore knows that. Every diabetic knows that. There's no almost no doctor that will not tell you, cut your sugar or else they'll say, watch your sugar. So we all know it. But what a lot of people don't realize is that you might as well be eating a candy bar as eating that big plate of mashed potatoes. Or you might as well be eating a candy bar or a piece of pie as to eat that big pretzel. Because the, those bread carbs, are those potato carbs, are those rice carbs, are those starch carbs, are those pasta carbs, are all going to go right down into your belly and turn into sugar immediately. And they are going to mess you up big time. And that's what a lot of people don't know. They come home for the doctors. I'm diabetic. I got to give up sugar, honey. I, I, I can't eat sugar. Don't make any more desserts for me. But they continue to stuff themselves with potatoes and with rice and with bread and all kinds of other carbs, bags of chips and uh, all kinds of pastas. And uh, it doesn't, they find, yeah, it probably helps some to cut the sugar, but it's just not enough. Okay. Now, some, let me just say this. Some people say, yeah, but there are people who can get away with eating the, nat the more natural uh, carbs. You know, there are native tribes that, that can live on sweet potatoes and their blood sugar doesn't go too bad and their insulin levels are fine. And it is true that if we don't push ourselves too hard in our youth, sometimes some people can get by with eating a fairly high-carb diet almost all their life or maybe all their life. So it's not that nobody could ever get away with that. But if you've crossed the line, it's going to be very hard for you to come back. And the problem with most people today is we've just got way too many carbs. If the only carbs we ate were potatoes and some brown rice and some really gritty whole grain bread, probably wouldn't be too many diabetics. But we've got all kinds of chips and all kinds of pastries and all kinds of white flour products and uh, all kinds of just junk and desserts and snacks. And we stuff ourselves in the morning. We have a mid-morning snack. We stuff ourselves at lunch. We have a mid-afternoon snack. We stuff ourselves at night. And then we have a going-to-bed snack. And we're just eating, eating, grazing, 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 carbs, carbs, more carbs. And we cross that line. And when you cross that line... Uh, you may never be able to come back. People want to come back. When can I eat potatoes again? When can I eat rice again? You may never be able to come back. There are some people who can drink a glass of wine with their dinner, and it's not a problem. They don't overdrink. They don't become alcoholics. They don't get roaring drunk. They have a nice glass of wine, get a little bit of a buzz with their meal, and that's the end of it. But there are other people, if you set a glass of wine in front of them, They'll drink that glass, they'll want another glass and another glass, and then they'll sip on some whiskey in their room, and uh, they will just, they can't handle it. So they have to just say, no more drinking for me, no more alcohol, no wine, no beer, no whiskey, no nothing. And that's just how it is. And for diabetics, often that has to be the case. We've become uh, carb addicts, and the only way we can really get away from diabetes is to just avoid most carbs. The vegetable carbs, low-carb vegetables, we can handle. And berries, we can usually handle. Uh, so it's not like you have to go down to zero carbs. And I eat salads almost every day. And so uh, I have no problem with carbs as long as they're low-carbs. I've never gone on a no-carb diet. I may have a no-carb day once in a while, but never a no-carb uh, diet. Never have and never plan to. Okay. Let's see here. Here's a comment. When my wife and myself went on the keto diet with fasting, our A1C normalized. Let me just run that by you again. 
When my wife and I went on a keto diet, our A1C normalized. And I have heard that so many times, but we really need to understand that. He says, both of us were in the diabetic range. We lost 60 pounds so far. Let me say, hearing these kind of reports doesn't surprise me anymore. I've heard way too many of them, but it still blesses me. It still excites me. It still thrills me, but it doesn't surprise me because I, I just hear this all the time. In fact, I would be surprised to hear someone say, well, I went on a keto diet. My A1C didn't go anywhere. It's still just as high as ever. And once in a while, somebody will say, I'm still struggling like that, but uh, I don't hear that often. He says, our old doctor just retired. The young doctor that took his practice was thrilled. Love it. I love happy doctors. Uh, when people get their A1Cs down, uh, a doctor should be happy and a doctor should be patting you on the back. Some don't. And I've heard, I remember hearing one who said, well, my doctor went to the door where I was sitting, told me my A1C, which was, you know, finally into the fives from way high, and then just walked on his way. In other words, just shared the number. No congratulations. No, wow, this is great. No big smile on his face. Just shared the number and went his way. Shame on you, doctor. Shame on you. All right. Anyway, this person says, our new doctor told us it's rare to take people off medicines, but both my wife and myself have had several removed. This is powerful stuff. Amen. This is powerful stuff. And it really is. The, the, the knowledge that we have some control here, and by the grace of God, we can cut carbs and we can do intermittent fasted, time-restricted eating, and uh, see victory. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I want to shout it from the housetops. And I guess in my own limited way here from my housetop in Texas, I'm in an upper, this studio that I come to you from is a, a second floor. And so I'm in a sense shouting it from the housetops and declaring, you can see victory, my friend. And don't be discouraged. Don't be depressed. Uh, victory's for you. Sometimes I hear people who have much lower A1Cs than others that I've heard. And they say, oh, I'm just so discouraged. I'm so depressed. And I'm like, uh, you know, I've heard of so much worse cases than yours, and they got victory. There's no reason why you can't. Anyway, he says, this is powerful stuff. Uh, he said, my blood pressure normalized, fasting glucose, 92, wife's fasting glucose, upper 80s. I work out in the gym three times a week. I hike two to three times a week, retired, but I, so I have time to do that. But you cannot outrun a bad diet. Uh, powerful words and so true. You cannot outrun it. You've got to change your diet and then do the exercise as well. When I first had my metabolic problems, I remembered something I had watched on TV some years before, and I immediately thought of it. I had watched a documentary about Native American, and well, well, what we call Indians, Native Americans is the more politically correct term, uh, and Native Americans tend to have uh, a lot more trouble with diabetes, whether it's because of environmental issues or their diet or what, who knows. But at any rate, they do. They have more diabetes than other folks. So I saw this documentary about a, uh, almost a whole village of Native Americans who were just coming down with diabetes just like crazy. And uh, one of them got the idea that if I jog enough and, and lose some weight, you know, I can beat this thing. And he, sure enough, he did get his numbers down. And uh, he passed on the word. And before long, he had almost an entire village out there running. So this documentary was about this Native American village, uh, I suppose on a reservation somewhere, where they're all out jogging in the morning to beat their diabetes. So when I got my attack of diabetes, not that it ever quite went that high, but I knew it was coming. I immediately thought of that documentary and I immediately started exercising. But I found that exercise is not the biggest point. It is diet, diet, diet. Exercise helps. Exercise is good for you. I'm not against it. I think everybody should be doing it. But don't think you can outrun a bad diet. Don't say, well, I'll keep my diet bad, but I'll run. Or don't do this. Don't say, well, I'll eat three donuts and then I'll go run three miles. Well, here's a better idea. Don't eat three donuts. Eat an omelet and then just do a light elliptical trainer or a treadmill or go for a walk for 20 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever you like. And you don't have to run three miles. And so we don't out-exercise bad diets, but we can change our eating style, our diet, and we can find victory. And it is a wonderful thing. All right. Well, that is it for now. Hope you enjoyed this. If so, give it a thumbs up. 
And I hope you'll consider subscribing to our channel and then click that bell icon so you will be notified every time we post a new video and you can get in there and see what the latest Beat Diabetes episode involves. God bless. See you again soon.